Hey guys, it's Andre from FuelTech USA, and today we're talking the FuelTech delay box function. In an effort to continue expanding our all inclusiveness with our FuelTech systems, we decided to add the bracket delay. This is a feature for all you guys that do some sportsman racing, bracket racing, super class racing, that you need that delay feature. Now you can have it also within the fuel tank. We have included everything that's popular on it. Delay one, delay two. You can hit the tree twice with separate buttons or the same one. We have our bump up, we have our bump down, and we even added a super bump. So we have three button options that you can use to help adjust your tree. On top of that, we have the pre-launch features. So the pre-launch will allow you to have either a double step or allow you to control a throttle stop or air cylinder when you're in the process of staging and hitting the tree. So the double step, the way that would work, for example, when I race, once I'm fully staged and my competitor is fully staged, I go ahead and I go wide open. I deck it and the car holds at 3200 RPM. Once the timer on my side starts counting, so it takes into consideration any crosstalk, any crossover that you're doing. Once your timer starts counting, then it'll chip up to what you're actually gonna be leaving at. So in this case, 3200, once I hit the tree, my timer starts counting, goes to 46, I leave. It's a really useful feature for being able to repeat your procedure without the distraction of the car being way chipped up. I really wanna just show you guys how easy it is to use, because one of the questions I get a lot is, well, how do you access it? Like, is it easy to use? Absolutely. The fact that we have a touch screen allows us to have a very easy interface, something that is very easy to understand and even works with your gloves. Come on, let me show you. Here's a display on my FT600. As you can appreciate, we got delay one, your dial, an opponent's dial so you can easily identify what you have set up in your delay in order to make any changes touch the upper right hand corner it takes you to your launch delay one touch it again your dial touch it again opponent's dial very easy to make changes touch it one more time and you're back on your home screen and of course this all works with gloves Now let me show you guys how to set this up with our FT Manager. As you guys saw in the car, most of the things that you're going to be adjusting on the fly, like delay one, your dial, and your opponent's dial, are very easy to change directly on the ECU touchscreen. However, for the other features that you want to have available, but that once you set them, you don't really mess with them, bump up, bump down, the second delay hit, super bump, pre-launch features, all those things we do it on the laptop, in FT Manager. So let me go ahead and show you how we do all that. All right, bracket delay set up, let's go. First we need to open up FT Manager. Now if you're connected to your ECU, you can go ahead and open map from ECU. I'm gonna close this out to show you how you can get to it under normal conditions. Basically you come up here. If it's connected, this will be lit up. You hit read ECU. We're gonna pick our active map. First thing, map options, we wanna make sure that launch delay controls is activated. Then you can click on the link and it'll take you straight to the setup page. Launch delay one, this is our main delay. You can adjust it to wherever you need it there. Launch delay two, this allows us to hit the tree twice. So once again, you can come in here and make any adjustment to it you might want. Oh, 35 seems reasonable. Then delay two to override delay one. If this is in the off position, whichever delay expires first, this or this will launch the car. If you have it on, then by pressing the trans brake button again or the two step button again, then this timer will override the initial one. So the car will not launch until the trans brake button or the two step is released again and this timer expires. Bump up, bump down, super bump. Bump up can only be positive numbers, so put 0 0.007 to bump up, 
up down, remember to put the negative in front of it. 004. Super bump can be positive or negative. So just kind of pick your poison if you feel you're more likely to miss it or if you're more likely to kind of meet it on, you can help protect yourself with a bigger number. In my case, I am more likely to miss it. So I go ahead and put myself an extra there, you know, negative 014, 015, whatever works for you. Pre-launch cut. This is what I was talking to you guys about the dual step. So in this case, by having it active, when I press the trans brake button or the two step, then the car will remain at 3200 RPM limiter until this much time is left on the main timer. So when 0.900 of the main timer is left, then it'll allow it to chip up to whatever the main two step is. Next, we have the ET dials. This is what we need to activate if we're trying to do any crosstalk racing. I say crosstalk and not crossover because we do not have a crossover compensation integrated into this. So if you are actually running in one of those rare occasions where you have to hit the tree across, then you would have to remember to adjust your main delay to compensate for the fact that you're looking at the tree, you know, a little bit offset. In this case here, you can set it to whatever you want. Very easy to change once you're in the car with the actual screen. Next, we have delay activation on two-step release. So we have what's called a validated launch in our systems. And in order to be able to circumvent that and use this much delay to hit the top bulb, you're gonna wanna select any two-step release will trigger. This will allow us to override our validated launch protocol. And even when the two-step button is released, while this delay is still active, as long as the two-step rev limiter is reached, then once it is released, it will start all the time-based compensation. So let's say you have uh, a timing curve that you have predetermined and pre-programmed into it that, uh, that will happen once the car launches, or let's say nitrous, or uh, shifting by time. None of those things will happen unless the conditions for the validated launch are met. Next, we have bump up bump down and the super bump. Here, what we're telling the ECU is what kind of signal it's gonna be receiving to let it know that this button was pushed. So is it gonna be ground-based or 12-volt based? And you can adjust it for each button individually. Then we have the pre-launch output. This pre-launch output is in conjunction with this pre-launch timer. So let's say you wanna use a throttle stop or uh, just an air cylinder to keep the RPM down while you're staged and hitting the tree. This will allow you to do it and you can do it by zero volts or ground or if you have a 550 or a 600 with yellow outputs available then you can do it with a 12 volt activation. So basically they will remain active until this much time is left of the original delay and then it'll turn that off and let the car chip up to the normal two-step range. Next, we are going to go ahead and set up our dashboard. So we come here, all the way down on the tree, interface settings, dashboard setup. First thing that we need to make sure is that we have all four of the dashboards turned on here. If you put three, then it will limit it to three. You see this is light gray here. Want to make sure we have four so we can do everything that we need to. All right, first thing that we want to do is set up our indicators to tell us how much delay we have, opponent's dial, and our dial. So delay one, bracket delay one, on here, hit OK. We're going to set it to fit the space. The entire dash is configurable, so you don't have to stick to what's on here. You can make it look like whatever you want. In the second space here, we're going to go ahead and put your dial and go one by two. Third slot, we're going to go search it there, opponent's dial, one by two, okay. Now, in order to set up 
what we're going to be able to manipulate later on the touch screen, we touch on the first block here, top left on dashboard two. And here, we're going to go to de delay one, but as you can see, it's selector. So bracket delay one selector, top corner, it'll automatically fill in the whole thing. Boom. Dashboard three, we are going to go to bracket delay. So bracket your dial selector, top left hand corner, save, done. Next one, bracket opponent's dial selector. Okay, save. All right, that's it. Now, when you touch the upper right hand corner of the screen, it'll go to dashboard two, touch it again, it'll go to three, touch it again, it'll go to four, touch it one more time, it'll come home. Or you can go left, kind of same thing. So from one to four to three to two, or if you enable this function right here, regardless of whatever screen you're on, if you hit the two step button, it will automatically take you back to your main dashboard. And that's it. We got it set up and there you have it. As you can see, very simple to set up everything. And now that you guys have seen it in the car and you've seen how to set it up, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. And did I mention that we also have a practice tree?